I don't always play video game covers, but when I do, I play them with David Ortiz. Do you know the, the never-ending story and you know like the the dragon thing from that? I think it's supposed to be a dragon. There's a, there's a billboard, a, a fucking billboard on the side of the, the highway and it's of it's the head of that character with like it's either red or green eyes and it says and the the sign says follow me for CBD <laughs> yeah, just because it's high as fuck I'm not joking that shit's real all right here we have uh, Garden of Rosa Redux. So, I, I looked at the pictures just to kind of see, and I think this is more in line with what you would expect from the first version. You, you'd think you would actually kind of, I guess, meet the family, but, but you didn't, and I guess this time you do. So, we're going to go to the new part. All right, here we go. Swearing, Rosa leans into the open car. Uh, hang on, we're late. Rosa, go ahead, whatever. Rosa slides behind the wheel in a flash, with myself not much further behind her in a, on the passenger side. I can barely manage to buckle myself in before Rosa te tears out of the parking lot. Raptor Jesus Christ, are all dinos this bad of drivers? Hey, Murala, Murala! A group of passing students dive for cover as Rosa cuts the corner. Maybe I won't have to meet her family after all, because I'll be dead in a ditch on the way there. I'm glad Rosa gave me this cross when she did. It at least gives me something to pray over as I watch my life flash before my eyes. The drive out to Rosa's house is much longer than I expected. Wait. The drive out to Rosa's house is long, much longer than I expected. Now it continues. The bustle of city slowly gives way to the neat order of the suburbs which in turn yield their place to a patchwork of farms and ranch houses. My relatively short walk to school suddenly doesn't seem so bad. Jeez, I can't believe Volcadera High is the closest school Rosa can get to. It's not. Mama wanted me to go, though. She said the schools out here are, are Basura. Goddamn mumbling. That's actually the closest to us. I think Peppy went there, actually. Rosa points to a semi-dilapidated building as we drive by, its most prominent features being several smashed windows and a dire need for a new paint job. If it wasn't for the billboard out front sporting the school's name, I, don't, I would think Rosa was lying. It must be hard living so far away from school. Rosa turns off the main street passing onto a lonely, unmarked road. See, see, sometimes it can be a pain, especially when I'm doing, I'm late doing my hair or whatever. I peek over, watching as Rosie tussles her hair with her free hand. It's hard to believe she ever had a bad hair day in her life with how luscious those auburn locks look. Hey, Alan, Deja, you're making me blush. Sometimes, it pays the mumble. Chuckling, I point to my impeccable chrome dome. At least that's something I never have to worry about. Giggling, Rosa leans over to elbow me in the ribs. I entertain us for a while by attempting to blind, blind pass a motorist with the reflection of my head. Okay. Eventually, Rosa pulls off yet again, this time passing through a wrought iron gate and into a well-maintained gravel drive. Long
long stretches of green growing. Things flank us on either side. That's how it is, man. Those <laughs> that shit will hit your windshield. It's just like, Jesus Christ, I don't want scratches. This must be the place. Rosa pulls up to a large terracotta tiled house. It's nice with a huge porch wrapping around the house. Parked outside a large barn are several work trucks, dirt, dirt splattered and with several racks of tools in the back. So do you guys use all these for the farm? I point at the trucks as I climb out of Rosa's car. Backpack in hand. Rosa follows shortly after me, not bothering to lock up her car. What? Oh, tho those. See? Well, some of them. She points to one on the far end, whose equipment racks are empty. That one there? That's Papi's truck. The truck in question does look a little nicer. Newer, with a little less dirt on the outside. Your dad doesn't haul his own equipment or something? Not quite. Rosa turns to me, grinning mischievously across her car. Mama just makes Pappy store his guns inside now. What little blood remains in my monitor bleached face fades. Relax, I'm just kidding. I sigh, resisting the urge to mop my forehead. <laughs> he still leaves them outside sometimes. Trying desperately to banish the image of a gun-toting ankylosaur, breaking down my door, I turn my back and gaze out the field, gaze out across the fields. So, changing the topic for no particular reason. Is this all your family's farm? I jab a finger out towards the fields. Rosa joins me on the other side of the car, away from the house. The fields come nearly all the way up to the house, separately, separate only by a well-kept yard and a pasture-style fence. Beyond that, though, they seem to stretch a pretty, pretty sizable distance. See, all 40 acres of it. Half of it, half of it we, we lease out to the other farmers who need extra fields, or to companies during the off-season. I nod along. Even if, after all this time spent in the gardening club, I still know nothing about growing things. Although, I, we're back at it again. Although I did grow that cool mushroom that one time, and, and on that one sock, Remember to wash your socks after you're done using them. You know what? Never mind. Mama and Poppy brought it when they got married. B bought it. She giggles, sending my heartbeat quickening. I don't even think they had money for a house at first. That must have been an awkward wedding night. Rosa elbows me in the ribs again, oh, a little less gently this time. Ah, none of that, comprendo? She, Rosa settles down, leaning, leaning her head on my shoulder. It's not much compared to some other farms out there. Compared to some other farms? Ah, you must, you gotta see what Bill Gates owns. It's ridiculous. Taking in the size of their field, it's hard to imagine this is a small operation. I help out Puppy when we can, when I can, weekends, or after school if my boyfriend doesn't make me late. I rest my hand, head on hers, smelling the sweet smell of her hair. 
Well, I didn't know I was depriving your family of such a valued worker. Ro Rosa continues to stare out across her family's field. Normally, Mama helps out as well, but ever since she... Her voice trails off. Foot, meat mouth. I can feel Rosa stiff against my shoulder, hear her playing idly with her keys. Hey, Rosa turns to look at me, a sad little frown creasing on her beautiful face. I didn't mean to bring up that. Honestly, I didn't. This is supposed to be a nice night, and here I go, stressing, stressing you out and shit. I'm sorry. I can't know what you're going through, but I'm here to make it better however I can. I'm here for you. I pull Rosa into a squeeze, feeling her hug me back tight. We stand like that for a second, both of us re relishing each other's touch. When Rosa speaks, her, her voice is muffled against my chest. Gracias, Anon. She pulls away. And it's okay. You, you didn't say anything wrong. It's just hard sometimes. You've never seen her before. Rosa gestures vaguely in the air. Before she got sick. Before she got sick. But she's so different now. She slimmed down so much. And even the smallest things are difficult. Rosa throttles the air in frustration. And if she just let me help her. For a second it looks like Rosa is going to, to launch into another Spanish tirade. But she hold, holds back. Spent, she sighs. What am I going to do, Anon? I shift from foot to foot, awkwardly. I'm still not used to people asking advice from me. A miserable weeb who just wanted to be left alone. But now Rose and Fang both look to me for help. On the roof, Fang just wanted to vent. But this is different. Jeez, what do I even say to her? Every, everything I can think of sounds so trite, so commonplace. I honestly don't know what to say. Rosa, she turns her eyes to mine. The truth is, I don't know what's going to happen with your mom. Before she can start to look worse, I take hold of both her hands. But I do know what's that whatever happens, I'll be right there beside you. Rosa faces me with pleading eyes. Promise. I give her hands a squeeze. Promise. My words seem to ease Rosa somewhat. The faint beginnings of a s smile ease her face out of its previous frown. Good. Taking my hands in Taking my hands in hers, she leads me to the front door, where her family is waiting for me. As Rosa and I cross through the door, a thought occurs to me. The last family I visited... Hopefully this goes a little better than that. Mama, Papi, esto en casa. As Rosa leads me through the front door, I'm hit with an immediate and powerful wave of smells. Strong odors remis reminiscent of Rosa's cooking per permeate the inside of the house, the spicy richness promising the best meal of my life. The strongest of which is coming from over there. It smells good, doesn't it? I look back to where Rosa is hanging her backpack in a closet. In a closet. A brief glance of a mountain of work boots and trucker hats cement that this is her this is a working household. I'm not half as good as Mama in the kitchen. Not half as good. I recall all the delicious meals Rosa has brought me over our relationship. This promises to be a good evening then. Rosa gives me a playful hip check. My, aren't you supposed to say I'm the best cook? 
I managed to catch myself before stumbling into a wall of pictures. Isn't honesty the best policy? Close the rules or eyes at the tired cliché. Not when your girlfriend's feelings are at stake. Giving her my most innocent grin, I take a look at the photographs I almost crashed into. Most of them seem to be from family photos, sm smiling ankylosaurs at various stages of life, attending huge family gatherings. Their happiness reminds me of how little my own family seems to want to do with me. Is this you? I point to a photo of a young woman in an enormous dress, the pink frilly skirt nearly doubling her size. Rosa eyes the photo for a second. Why does she look nostalgic? Actually, that's... It's me. A cold voice cuts Rosa off before she can finish. I turn slowly to face the owner, suddenly very aware of how close Rosa and I are, sta are standing. God dang it. Okay, there we go. She's just standing there. Menacingly. Good God. Uh, Mama, this is Anon. Didn't we already go to church? Or wouldn't I have met them? Or am I? I don't know. I might be misremembering. The demurely dressed matron of the house regards me with cold eyes. How do you do, ma'am? Any second now, I feel like I'm going to slip on my own puddle of sweat. Anon, this is my madre, Isabel. So, Rosa takes a step towards us. I have to fight the instinct to step back. With Fang's dad, it was like staring down the barrel of a gun. But this is like being measured by my own for my own coffin. You are the Nino my Rosa has fallen for. She looks me down head to toe before addressing her daughter. El Espreno. Mama. Calva. Her eyes seem to fixate on my head. Calva. The pair of them descend into rapid Spanish. Even with Rosa serving as my free tutor when she can, I haven't learned enough to follow the conversation. Eventually, after much gesturing, Rosa seems to have won whatever battle they were waging. The stern, spiny se senorita favor <laughs> favors me with a curt nod and a stiff and a sniff. Dinner will be ready soon. Go wash up down the hall. Without another word, she tur turns to on her heel, stalking back towards the source of the heavenly smells. I finally release the breath I was subconsciously holding. How can someone that frail looking muster up that much intensity? I felt like she was going to nail me to the wall with her gaze alone. I feel Rosa at my side, tugging me down the hall. Come on, Anon, you heard Mama. I did? I'm still dazed at my near Madre experience. Rosa gives me a weak smile. Cheer up, this is going well. That was what you consider well? See, si, see. Si. I expected a lot more, honestly. I mean, you heard what she said. I think she likes you. I heard what she said. Rosa, I couldn't understand anything she said. Laughing, Rosa takes my hand, patting it as she leads leads me in the direction her mom indicated. Following her, a part of me is surprised my bones haven't turned to jelly. Didn't you learn anything from your Spanish lessons? No. Well, you wouldn't tell me how to swear, so... No. Wait, that was Spanish, wasn't it? It was all good. It was all good, trust me. My bullshit alarm, finally honed after years of spotting shills, be beans to go off. Rosa, what does Cano Monoflaco mean? A 
If I didn't know better, I'd say she was biting back a laugh. Look, you made it through the front door, didn't you? That's not something any other boy can say. A Pyrrhic victory at best. Also, any other boy. Have there been? Granted, you are the only boy I've... Ruse's face starts to turn red. I, I mean, you're the first boyfriend that I've... With how she's twisting her hair, I'm surprised she hasn't pulled it off. You're the first boy I've ever been serious about. I've had other boyfriends before, but none I've wanted to bring home to me familia. Uh, now it's my turn to for a face inferno. That's, uh, Rosa buries her face in her hands for a second. Ah, Dios mio. Anon, don't mention that to mama. What, the other boyfriend part, or the part about being serious? She uncovers her face with an embarrassed laugh. Both. If Mama knew there were other boys, ones I didn't mention, she'd... I think I can imagine what would happen if Isabel found out Rosa had other boyfriends in the past. For some reason, a shallow grave keeps popping up. Don't worry, Rosa. Your secret is safe with me. Rosa sags with relief. I wonder if I could... But it's gonna cost you. And my cheeky grin is just quickly silenced by Rosa's threatening finger. Nope, can't joke about it yet. Ah no, lo juro por Dios. Freshly scrubbed for dinner, Rosa leads me into the kitchen. It's cozy, the numerous cooking utensils lining the walls gives it a lived-in feel. It's still probably bigger than my entire apartment. Rosa's mother turns away from the stove, where a massive stained cook pot boils with the most amazing smells I've ever, well, smelled. So, and on. Her eyes narrow. Tell me about yourself. She settles down onto a stool by the stove with a sense of familiarity. I wonder how long she spends in this room. Well, ma'am, there's not much to tell. I start to relay the important parts of my life, starting with my move to Valcadera. Careful to leave out the specific reason behind my move. Isabel takes it in silence, quickly st studying me behind a coffee cup with two little handprints on it. There's a strength in her eyes, unmatched by her body, like she's holding herself together more through sheer will than anything else. Rosa never specified what was wrong with her mom, but now that, I, but now that I'm not fearing for my life, I can see the signs. Isabel's hands shake slightly when she gives a, uh, the pub Pablano a, st a stir, her body frail, her, fa her face creased beyond her age. I can't imagine what Rosa must be going through, seeing her mother being reduced like this. And well, that's how your daughter and I met. And how you kissed. She wields the word like a knife. Well, uh, Mama! Rosa brand brandishes the same finger she used on me, blushing furiously as she does so. Es privado, you and Papi said you'd be nice. Isabel relents somewhat, a sly smile crawled on her face. Santa Rosa, but you didn't think I wouldn't embarrass you in front of your friend, did you? She catches herself slightly, the word boy noticeably, noticeably, noticeably ab absent. Rosa begins sliding around the kitchen, summoning plates and silverware from the multitude of cabinets. 
Amnon, you'll have to forgive Mama. She promised to be nice, but I suppose she's forgotten that promise as well. The older woman flinches slightly. Whatever promise Rosa is talking about, it seems to have an effect on her mother. Rosa, not a lot of not stressed on that. Whatever. The two women stare at each stare each other down for a second. Fine, but we are not finished with this. Isabel sighs. I suppose not. Come, Anon, help me to the table. Papi should be here soon. I hold out my hand for her to take, helping her out of the stool. Her grip is, weak, is weaker than I thought it would be. The dining room dominates much of the space next to the kitchen. A massive table extends almost from wall to wall, surrounded by curio cabinets and family portraits. Everywhere I look, a member of Rosa's family stares me down. This is far enough, and on Crashias. The, the waifish woman takes a seat down towards the head of the table. Rosa joins us soon after, distributing plates and spoons for, for four. Please, Anon, sit, sit. She beckons me into the chair across from her. Are you sure? I'd be happy to help Rosa in the kitchen. I cast a semi-pleading look towards my girlfriend. A part of me wants to avoid being alone with Rose's mom, in case I do anything to make it, make things worse. <coughs> Rosa, can serve Rosa can serve dinner when her father gets here. Come, talk to an old woman for a moment. Laughing, Rose, Rosa finishes the plate set, place setting. Mama, you're no old woman. Aye, Rosa, sometimes I feel like one. As I take a seat across from her, I, I can see what she means. All the strength Isabel had before seems to have gone. Like she was saving it all up for our initial meeting. She can barely sit, sit upright without wincing now. And I'm sorry about how I acted before. Her apology catches me off guard. It's not every day Rosa brings home a book brings a boy home for us to meet, and, well, she laughs softly. I, I acted just like me pa, 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 pia madre. Taking another sip from her mug, she gives me a soft smile. Despite the waning of her eyes, it's just as warm as any of Rosa's. Please, you were telling me more about you and Rosa. How, how have you two, two been getting along f with the garden? Before I can answer, a booming voice echoes from the front door. <laughs> I'm not even going to bother. <laughs> not bothering to wait for a response, what, what I can only assume to be Rose's dad barges into the dining room. Uh. It's like watching an avalanche of scales descend towards me in slow motion. That be. Rosa flits out of the kitchen, hugging her father as he spins her around. Joshua, please, how many times have I told you? Boots off at the door. Rosa's mom gives the titanic man a pleading look, her voice weak. Quoi? <laughs> oh! Ooh, that! Letting Rosa down, he looks back at the dusty boot prints on the floor. Holding both hands to his gut as if to contain it, Joshua lets out a booming laugh. Sorry, dear. What's the good of having a broom if we don't use it? He turns to me, still holding his stomach with one hand. Ah, you must be him! Rose intro introduces me from the kitchen as I stand, hand outstretched. <laughs> Gonna shake my hand off, folk. Oh, 
Happy, this is Anon, my boyfriend. She gives me a cute smile while she attends to the dinner being cooked. Huh? Anon, huh? I've heard a lot about you, boy. Come here, come here. <laughs> Joshua ignores my outstretched hand. Oh, nice to meet you. <laughs> Before I can protest, I'm swallowed up in a hug, smothered by 250 pounds of scaly, scalding di dinosaur scales. I can feel the life slowly being squeezed out of me. Josh, let the poor boy go. He's had enough parental trouble already. <laughs> Free from my fleshy prison, I can finally breathe again. Isabel, I forgive you for anything you may have said. Ah, uh, sorry, sorry. Just so good to see you, Anon. Joshua's repeated claps to my shoulder feel like I'm being driven into the floor as a human nail. <clears throat> I've been looking for I've been looking forward to this all week. My little girl bringing home her little boyfriend for the first time. Uh, what father wouldn't be excited? I can think of one. Maybe even several. Rosa emerges from the kitchen, a terrain of Heavenly scented goodness cradled in her arms. Puppy, please. I, I like there to be something left of Anon by the end of the night, okay? Ignoring the idea of Rosa wanting me at the end of the night. Indeed, I'm sure you would. Just go clean up. We're about to eat. Laughing, Joshua's dad flees to the kitchen as Rosa starts to dole out the food. I have to hold myself back from diving into the sticky sweet goodness. If anything, it smells even better than the time Rosa brought it to the gardening club meeting. Still in one piece? I guess. Sm smiling, Rosa takes a spot next to mine. Barely, your da dad may have squeezed a bit, bit of me out with that hug there. I can see Isabel smile out of the corner of my eye. Seems she's preparing her own appetizer of pills. See, he's a friendly guy, puppy. He's all, he almost appealed himself on Stella's spikes the first time she came over. <laughs> Your little green friend? Uh, I, prefer this, I prefer this one here. Rosa's dad points to me as he takes his spot at the head of the table. Much less spiky. <laughs> His booming laugh makes me jump a little. All right now, Rosa, would you lead? Lead? Like, get a head start on eating or up? Uh, I see Rosa begin to cra clasp her hands together. <laughs> oh, yeah. Right. The Christ cookery. <sighs> I'm the picture of Raptor Jesus above the table. I bow my head as well. <laughs> I mean, he's the one with the cross in his apartment <laughs> for some reason. <laughs> Once grace is finished, dinner itself passes quickly. The mole poblano is just as delicious as it smells. Rosa even slipped some chicken into mine, knowing how I prefer to avoid tofu. Before long, I was awash in family stories and great food. Joshua took no small delight in telling all of Rosa's embarrassing stories. <laughs> like how she used to have Rosa adventures as Rosa to explore. <laughs> Uh, complete with a purple back backpack she made herself. It's really weird seeing a realistic boots, you know what I mean? And a, real and a realistic swiper. <laughs> Some of the weirdest properties get a live action version of them, you know what I mean? Like... 
why is there like a gritty realistic version of Archie comics I think there was a movie of it or something a long time ago of Archie called Return to Riverdale or something like it, it was advertised in the in one of the little booklets you would have uh, <laughs> uh, complete with a purple backpack she made herself man I am so going to hold that over her head Isabel even got a little of her pre previous spark back either, either from the food or the memories she seemed to take delight in drawing my own family stories out of me well what little there was As the night went on, it was plain to me that this was going to be a, a one-sided affair. Rose's parents would regale me with happy tales of their wonderful daughter. And I would try to ignore the fact that my parents didn't want a single thing to do with me anymore. I thought back to my mom and dad, back in Rock Bottom, the same ones who sent their only son halfway across the country. Did they do it because I begged them to, unable to face the teasing anymore? Or did they do it because they wanted me out of their out of the house? My father made it clear that once high school was over, I wasn't welcome back home. Up until now, I haven't thought of what I would do. It always seemed so far away, and being alone was so tempting. But sitting here in a warm dining room surrounded by a loving family, I guess I realized that I kind of wanted that. The idea of going back home tonight after Rosa drops me off to an empty apartment in Skin Row. Is that what I want? After dinner, Rosa's parents walked us to the door. And on thank you for coming over. The frail room woman gives me a hug, her hands trembling somewhat on my back. Keep treating her right and maybe you can come over for Easter dinner. Mama. Rosa's mom hides a laugh behind her head, hand. And I'm pleasure to have you out here. You can do this, Anna, and prepare yourself. Oh, God. Oh. Nope, <laughs> didn't help a bit. Fuck, I think my spine might be dislocated. Maybe next time I can show you the fields. Make a farmer out of you. I manage a weak laugh to match his. Uh, yeah. I mean, gardening club is all right, but a uh, puppy. Stop trying to hire my boyfriend. Thank you, Rosa. These hands were meant for meant to farm noobs, not to farm crops. Ugh. I'm a leap gamer, boy. Don't you forget it. Drive safe, you two. Rosa gives her parents a hug. And come right home, Rosa. Stepping outside, the twilight of the evening cradled me like a cold blanket. I hesitated a moment, listening to the crickets chirp. It was nice to hear them again, so far from the city. Normal, the, the only light. Normally, the only light, nightlife I hear are the sirens and screams of drug addicts. Out here it was more like home, like rock bottom. Since when did I think of rock bottom as home? Anon. I just realized why it's called rock bottom. <laughs> Gotta just. <laughs> I realized I had closed my eyes. Sorry, I was just taking it in for a moment. Rosa entwined her arm in mine as we walked to her car. I could feel her sigh against my body. I'm in Minlovia. I think that went well, don't you? I nod, 
letting her voice mingle with the relaxing sounds of the farm. Papi liked you, but I guess he likes everyone. Even Mama wasn't as bad as I expected. We had reached the car now, moving to hold each other face to face. You expected worse? Mm, maybe. Rosa gives me a coy smile. You won her over in the end, though, and that's all that matters. She wasn't kidding about Easter, though. Their faces were almost touching at this point. Rosa's eyes begin to close as she presses her body against mine. So I've got to treat you right to be invited back, huh? My hands trail up her arms, coming to rest on her shoulders. Gods, does she smell wonderful. Oh, divines. Oh, see, see. You better treat me real good, Anon. Don't, wor <laughs> don't worry about that. <laughs> Her lips parted as she reached up to me, my own mouth coming down to meet her. So treat me well and kiss me, me, me more. Rose's arms creep up around my neck, pulling me even closer to her. It was all the excuse I needed. After what feels like an eternity, the start of a new quarter finally dawns. And not a moment too soon. I managed to survive midterms with most of my grades and sanity intact. I owe most of my survival to Stella and Rosa, honestly. The two of them were a huge help in helping me study. Normally I'd fall back on Fang, Trish, and Reed for help, since I got the most classes with them, but for some reason, Trish decided to dump dump a metric ton of bullshit on me during midterms week. I accidentally spilling coffee on my math notes, deliberately interrupting my study sessions in the library, pulling Fang out of our music lessons for some stupid reason or another. She even tried to get me pulled out of one of my tests, some bogus about me making a bomb threat or something. Pfft. Everyone knows mass shootings are the new craze. It was like she unleashed a year's worth of pent-up trigger rage on me in a span of five days. And no matter what I did, she just wouldn't relent. Whatever, at least it's over with. The pink parasocial parasite rolls her eyes over the rim of her hideously bedazzled coffee thermos. <laughs> Spears came on the speaker during homeroom, demanding all se seniors to make for the auditorium for a special announcement. Naomi took the opportunity to walk with me, but I know what she really wants. And and you just gotta ignore Trish. Don't let her get to you. Like you've been doing this whole year. Fuck's sake. <laughs> Maybe you can take a fa take get Fang and go somewhere or something. I don't know. This again. Ever since the concert at Moe's, Naomi seems convinced that Fang and I, and I belong together. Naomi, I told you, I'm with Rosa now. Fang and I, we're just friends. She hardly took that for an answer. I just think the two of you would work well together. Despite my best efforts, it's impossible to tune her out. Time for another approach. Look, I appreciate the help, Naomi, but I'm fine. Besides, shouldn't you be focused on your own boyfriend? Done anything fun with Nazer lately? Normally, Na Naomi takes to talking about Nazer like a cat to an unsupervised set of... Ventium <laughs> blinds. <laughs> you, you come home... And the blinds are just chewed up from your dog. You know what I mean? It's like, what happened? They're just, just chewed up just a little bit enough to be noticeable. It's like, thanks, I guess. <laughs> but 
today, I am focused on laser anim. What does that mean? You really don't get it, do you? No. <laughs> Naomi fixes me with her patented bitchy look before stomping away in disgust. Well, whatever. I don't need her prying into my relationships. I'm happy with Rosa, and Fang is, well... Well, I'm sure she's fine. I slip into the auditorium, scanning the rows of students. She should already be here. Anon, Kui. Rosa and Stella found a spot in the middle row. Further down, I catch a glimpse of a white winged figure near the front row. I wonder what Fang's doing so close to the stage. Hey Rosa, hey Stella. I slide into the empty seat next to Rosa. Automatically, our hands find one another's. They say what we're doing here? No, nothing yet. Oh my god, do you think this is about prom? Won't they just announce that to the whole school? Besides, isn't it a bit too early to be worrying about that? Oh, is that so? Rosa jabs a finger into my chest, smiling. What, not looking forward to prom in the via? I shift awkwardly into my seat. I've never been to a school dance before. My reputation at rock bottom pre precluded asking anyone out. But now that I'm with Rosa, I mean, I, I guess. <laughs> you guess. Rosa lays a hand over her forehead dramatically. The night of getting dressed up, dancing. Rosa sighs luxuriously. Ah, it's time romantic. When Rosa puts it that way, maybe it won't be so bad. My mind drifts to thoughts of Rose, Rosa. Resplent, resplent, resplentantly dressed, her and I standing cheek to cheek on the dance floor. <coughs> Geez, Adam, I didn't think you could get this red. Before I can embarrass myself further, Spears takes to the stage. Rosa and I, still holding hands, just barely manage to cover our ears in time. Listen up! I'm sure you know by now, but graduation's coming up quick. It's my job to make sure you are prepared for what that entails. But first, your student council has prepared a slideshow to start us off. <clears throat> the behemoth of a man nods towards Naomi as she slides out from behind the stage. Take it away! Naomi, not blessed with Spears' titanic voice, carries a wireless microphone with her. I check out the second she I check out the second she launches into her heavily rehearsed speech. Something about turning points in our lives. I don't know, who cares? Rose and Stella seem to be paying attention at least. I was wondering, I remember my brief glimpse of Fang from before. Sure enough, she's right down in the front row. Looks like Reed's operating the projector. That must be why they're t they're down there. Yeah, Trish is there with them. I can barely make it out, but it looks like she's looking back at the seats. What's she looking for? I give her the bird as she her gaze passes over me. <laughs> That's what you wanted, you stupid trigger. <laughs> the double finger defense. A sharp gasp from Rosa turns my attention away from Trish. What? I was just joking around. Wait, she's not even looking at me. What's so interesting about Naomi's... What the fuck? What the fuck is that? How is this happening? Ah. Trash! <laughs> I 
I was so careful. I got rid of everything. Nothing ever disappears from the internet. <laughs> Again, like, I don't know if I said this before, but the amount of those old cringe threads that were... The amount of pictures that were of Facebook and DeviantArt screenshots... What, that Somebody will press the Windows key and print screen. That will happen. It's that easy. <laughs> and then they have it forever. I got rid of everything. I can't bring myself to tear my eyes away from the horror that's on screen. It feels like the school. Fuck, the planet has, has stopped. Everyone is dead silent. And everyone is looking at me. Bro, <laughs> look at the top of his head. <laughs> look at this dude. That did it. Like a dam bursting, bursting, the room fills with the sounds of hundreds of voices laughing in unison. Naomi's frantic attempts to move past the slide are but a whisper among the jeering. Great <laughs> change the slide! With every change of slide, new shame is dropped on my head. Raptor Jesus, why are there so many? I mean, I guess you. I mean, you could have, like, reused the, the CGs that were, you know, in the normal version of the game. And each one worse than the last. A low well escapes my lips. Uh, oh my god. He's cringier than I am. Uh, and then, and then, please talk to me. I am dimly aware of Rosa's hand patting my cheek. There's a sudden boom from the front of the room. And then, darkness imprisoning me. Hello, misery, my old friend. I've come to speak with you again. Talk with you, I... I don't know. The lights come back on a second later, revealing what happened. Fang, wing, wings bristling, stands over the smashed remains of the projector. Naomi, Nazar, and Reed are off to her side. The couple, no doubt, grilling him about how this could happen. And Trish is... That bitch is nowhere to be found. Min the view. Rosa finally manages to twist my head around to face hers. Her voice trembles. And then, are you okay? All right, that's enough. Everyone, get your asses back to class now. I can hear Spears's voice, desperately attempting to reclaim order. All I can see is Rosa. Look at me, Mindelfeo, look at me. Rosa blocks out the ugly faces of the crowd. And in this moment, I'm reminded of that first awkward almost kiss we shared at the school gardens. The laughter seems to die down somewhat. It's okay, Anon. It's all going to be okay. Slowly, Rosa transfers the grip of one hand to my shoulder, gently pulling me up out of the seat. Am I going to fall down the stairs again? <laughs> Is somebody going to throw a soda can at me? <laughs> Just... no. no more cans of dog food. No more flamethrowers. <laughs> no more. <laughs> she never lets me look anywhere but at her face, however. Let's go, Minovia. Follow me. Smiling, she guides me along, walking backwards as to never take her gaze from mine. I don't know if the laughter died down by now or what, but I don't care. Hers is the only voice I want to hear right now. Shh, Anon. That's it. Just follow me, okay? Just follow me. Anon. Outside, Rosa cradles me to her chest. 
I think we're outside Spears' office. Are you going to be alright, Minovia? I can barely hear the words. Sometimes in life, you just do this. Ugh. <laughs> That's just the pose you take while you're just standing in a Walmart or something. And you're just not sure what to do anymore. I can barely hear her words. Honestly, my mind is still fuming about what just happened. What Trish... Trish... That bitch! Don't listen to what they were saying, Anon. You don't need them. All that hostility during midterms. And now this. Okay, Anon. Anon, please listen to me. Why this? Why now? What the fuck did Trish think she was doing? There are people who care about you here, at school. People like me. People like Fang, your friends. I swear to Raptor Jesus, when I find Trish, I'm gonna make her... <laughs> uh, look like a fucking joke. So don't worry about what other people say, um, okay, Anon? All that matters are the people who care about you. You've got to learn how to forgive. The sound of footsteps snapped me out of my daze. Rosa lets me pull away from her to face the new arrivals. It feels like her hand on my back is the only thing keeping me up upright, though. Fang, what are you doing here? Fang's voice is quiet, her eyes downcast. A part of me wonders how much of me, me buried in Rosa's cleavage she just saw. Oh, just... Oh, Rosa, it was awful. It was just awful. <laughs> Annan, you gonna be alright? I mumble something incoherent. That's me every day. We were worried about you. We? I had noticed Reed slinking up behind her, tail dragging across the ground. It's gonna get dirty with dust and shit. <laughs> Ugh, it's gonna be hard to clean it out with the feathers and. Ugh. Had to skip. Cl had to skip class, bro. Had to see how you were doing. I'm doing pretty shit, Reed. In case you missed it, I just got fucking docks in front of the whole entire school. Wait a minute. My thoughts focus themselves away from the best way. My thoughts focus themselves away from the best way to dispose, dispose, dispose uh, of a small dust busty dino for a of a small busty dino for a second. You. Reed, you were at the projector. Did you know? F Fang and Rosa both gasp. Reed? Reed. Lo toro de por Dios. Fang takes a step away from Reed, Reed, possibly to distance herself from Rosa's wrath. Watching Rosa level that finger in his direction, though, I don't think Fang moved far away enough away. What did you do? Whoa, 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 just calm down, me amigos. Hear me out, okay? Rosa flaring like a bull, Rosa halts her attack. She protect, but she also attack. How old is that meme? Is it two years old at this point? Or two or three? I don't like how old new memes are becoming. You know what I mean? Like, wasn't that yesterday? No, it was a couple of years ago, dude. <laughs> Reed lays out his version of events. By his account, Trisha acted all on her own. That little bitch. 
Truth, truthfully, with how angry I was, Reed could have blamed everything on Trash, and I'd believe him. All that shit she did during midterms had already lowered my opinion of her down to zero. What she just did wasn't adding more fuel to the fire. It was napalming the entire area. But, w but just when I was ready to find Trish and rip her horns out one by one, Reed said the only thing I'd never thought about. Did you ever stop to consider why Trish always gives you a hard time? It sought me in my tracks. Neither Fang nor Reed could answer for Trish for why she acted like she did towards me. There was only one way to find out. Adam, could you come in here for a second? With a final squeeze by Rosa, it was my turn to be called to the Spears' office. Inside, my eyes instantly fixate on Trish, sitting in front of Spears' desk, arms and tail wrapped around her knees in front of her. Raptor Jesus, there's like an entire rainforest of tissues surrounding her. She looks awful. Good. Trish, I believe you wanted to say something to Annan. I resist the urge to strangle her before... I, re I resist the urge to strangle her then and there. This is all your fault. My fault. If you hadn't come here and forced your way into, into our group, I can feel an angry bile starting to rise. If this bitch doesn't shut the fuck up, then Fang never would have developed feelings for you. The words erupt from Trish like a bursting dam. All my anger that had been building up up until now vanishes. Vanishes. Fang has feelings for me. Can't be. Can it? What she said before the show, wanting to study before midterms. The way her hands would brush against mine in science or music. A thousand other small, furtive things she she did, each a small reflection of the things Rosa and I shared. Fang likes me. Could I really have been so blonde? Or did I just not want to see it? You rip my best friend away from me, and what do you do? You go around with some other girl, rubbing it in their face. It's like you don't even care about them. But I care. Trish descends into a blubbering mess, hiding her head in her hands as fresh tears spill onto her lap. Annan? Spears' surprisingly gentle voice pulls me away from Trish's sobs. Is there anything you'd like to say to Trish? Trish raises her he head enough to peer up at me over crossed arms. Maybe Rosa was right. Maybe I have, maybe I do have to learn to forgive. Trish, I didn't mean to drive a wedge into your group, and I didn't mean to be such a dick to you. Her eyes widen in surprise. But what Fang feels about me? Man, this would be a lot easier without Spears here. I can't control what she feels any more than you can. Now, I never meant to hurt Fang by getting with Rosa. Believe me, I just wanted to be Fang's friend. But do what you did, even for someone you care about. That's fucked up. Trish withdraws into her little ball some more. I'm sorry you felt the need to protect Fang's feelings like this. And maybe one day I can forgive you for what you did. But not right now, okay? Trish stares at me like she can't believe what I just said. And frankly, I can hardly believe it either. Spears intercedes at this point, wrapping a fatherly arm around Trish's shoulder. Very mature of you, Annan. You're a long way from where you started. Feel free to take the rest of the day off. With one final look back at Trish, I head back out into the hall. 
Well, that's one crazy chick dealt with. <laughs> that's one crazy chick dealt with. Now I just hope I don't have to deal with two more. Back outside, the mood is tense. Fang, Fang and Reed occupy one side of the door, their whispered conversation halting as I emerged. Rosa stands on the other side, her expression carefully neutral. Looking at her, I can't remember the last time she looked this guarded. Shit, they must have heard everything. Yo, yeah, and you doing okay, bro? Honestly, I don't know. But I do know there's no way I'm going to go back to class today. Fang looks like, looks like she's about to say something, but stops. There's a pain in her eyes as she looks from the office door, then back to me. I, um... Fang. I can see the petite Patero jump at Rosa's word. Rosa doesn't sound angry. In fact, she doesn't sound like anything. And I think that's what's worrying everyone. Look, Rosa, I'm... I'm sorry for what Trish did, but I had nothing to do with it. How could you not tell me? Fang's beak snapped shut. Rosa's voice is husky, full of half-promised prom tears. All this time, feeling the way you do about him. All I can do is shuffle awkwardly as the two women turn their eyes towards me for a second. That must have hurt to see us together each and every day. I'm sorry, Fang. Fang's face is the picture of disbelief. It's clear she never expected Rosa to be the one apologizing to her. And truthfully, neither did I. Arms outstretched, Rosa takes a step forward. Amigas. Fang hesitates for a second, glancing towards me, her amber eyes catching mine. In that instant, I can feel like I can read her thoughts. If I do this, then any chance of us is gone. Smiling sadly, I nod my head. Friends, Rosa. Slowly, Fang curls her arms around Rosa, carefully looking at anywhere but at me. Just friends. Her words seem to be meant more for me than Rosa. Oh, great. Fuck's sake. Well, Grant, I know it's not be easy being being in your shoes. Then, just then, the door to Spears' office opens, disgorging a dejected and tear-stained Trish. You! Snarling, Rose's half lunges towards her. A string of Spanish expletives flooding out of her mouth. Hey, I recognize some of these words. <laughs> Trish is lucky that Fang was still hugging Rosa, the Patero putting all her weight into holding Rosa back. Hold me back, puto, hold me back! <laughs> Trish cowers back, too afraid to speak. Rosa, please. Ugh. I put myself between Rosa and the object of her wrath. As much as I would like to see Trish ripped to shreds, I knew it wouldn't solve anything. Man, this forgiveness thing really blows. Rosa, listen. This is something we need to talk about together, okay? Rosa relents slightly. Fang looks amazed to have held her back for this long. You told me to forgive, right? Well, I can't forgive Trish if you murder her. I can hear Trish whimper behind me. Fine. Rosa Fang slowly lowers her arms, careful to keep them close enough in case Rosa attacks again. Straightening her dress, Rosa gives me a cold glance. I may yet live to regret my decision. And then I will wait for you by the exit. Shooting daggers at Trish, Rosa strolls off. For a moment, the four of us just stand in silence, all eyes on the tr tiny triceratops. Eventually, Fang breaks the ice. 
Why? The talk with Trish is mercifully brief. Letting it spill about Fang's feelings towards me did not make Trish popular with her longtime friend. Fang seemed more angry at what Trish did in the auditorium than about Trish letting it slip about how Fang felt about me. Trish mostly just stood there and took it. I think she knew she messed up. She looked ready to start bawling again when Fang said she was going to take a break from the band. Reed stayed behind to comfort Trish and Fang as I left, as Fang and I left, neither of us wanting to stick around for obvious reasons. As I turned my back on her, I couldn't help but think that Trish got everything she wanted. Romantically, Fang and I were finished. And as much as it hurt to admit it, I think it's for the best. Rooting my teeth, I mentally prepare myself for what's about to happen. It's clear that everyone in the whole school now knows my shame. Keeping my head down, I tried my best to ignore the passing jeers. Here comes the can. Here it comes. Hey, there's the weep. God, he's pathetic. Alone on a Friday night. Hey, Annan, what's your power level? It's rock bottom all over again. I finally make it to the exit, shouldering open the door into the morning glare. Thankfully, Rosa is there waiting for me. <laughs> and there's the stairs. Immediately, I'm engulfed in a tight hug. But what if she catches it out of the air for me? And just ignore those guys, okay? The scent of her hair lingers as she lets me go. You want me to take you home? And linger alone in my empty apartment? No thank you. No spank you. Actually, maybe we could take a walk or something. I, <laughs> I can predict things. Actually, maybe we could take a walk or something. I just don't want to be alone right now. Hey, loser, think fast. What the fuck is that? Oh, no, she couldn't catch it. Oh, Anon, everything. Everything is beautiful, and nothing hurts. Even thinking about how much it hurts somehow hurts. Minofio, are you okay? Can you stand? I'm vaguely aware of something orange and indignant hovering above me. Hey, come on, stand estos pequeños this. Rosa helps me to my feet. Oh my everything. Can you walk? Should I call an amber lamps? Once I'm upright, I manage to take stock of what happened. I still got all my arms and legs. No cartel cut them off. I don't I don't think I broke myself up I don't think I broke myself upon my body. really felt the strength of the earth when I hit the ground, though. I try and take a step, and my legs collapsing quickly behind me. Fuck. Oh, Dios mio. <laughs> no, please, you are too hurt to walk. Why is it upside down? That's my question. Please, you're too hard to walk. Here, here, let me help you over here. 
and Rosa helps me to a nearby bench. You wait here while I bring the car around, okay? I nod, wishing I hadn't, hadn't as a new pain shoots down my spine. <coughs> Just a minute, see? Don't move. God, I... Be careful where you sit for an ex sit or lie down for an extended amount of time. Because yeah. like right here, like right around here, there was like a a chair that I was sitting in, and I don't know if it was because I slept on the couch for or something. When I was just sitting there for a while, and I was just like. I just wanted to get up and then it just cat caught me and I was like it, like it sent shivers I, I was shivering it was a cold sweat that like the the back pain that I had for that moment and I was too afraid to get up I was like can somebody come help me please can you help me get up I'm afraid to uh, but I'm all good now. <laughs> it was, that was scary. Don't move. Even if I wasn't broken, Rosa's tone barked, brooked no disobedience. I focus on breathing without agony as she sprints towards the parking lot. Alone with my thoughts, my mind keeps snapping back to Fang. How long has she had these feelings? The concert at Moe's? Before closing my eyes, I can see that look she gave me. The look that was look the look the one that was looking for me to give her any excuse to not accept Rose's friendship. Fuck, I'd hope I didn't ruin our own friendship because of this. Am I a jerk for doing that to her? No, I couldn't have kept le leading her on like that. She deserves the truth. That Rosa and I are a couple, and nothing is going to come between that. A sudden sneeze awakens fresh pain I never thought possible. <laughs> I'm not moving this camera with the snagging like, like beneath the, the. The Diary of a Wimpy Kid Do-It-Yourself book I'm using to hold this in place. It gets, it gets underneath it as I move, you know what I mean? And I'm afraid I'll move it and fuck my camera up. Okay, maybe my death might be come between us. With Rose's help, I'm barely able to make it into the passenger seat of her car. Hey, okay, Anna, where to? The hospital, please. If you please. What? I mean, where do you live? I hadn't even thought of where to go. The I my idea of just walking around town until sunset seems like a bad idea now. But going back to my apartment. I can't let Rosa see how I live. How about we just drive to the nearest... Address now. 237 South St. Hammond Street. Fuck. The words are out of my mouth before I knew it. Rosa chews her lip, hand hesitating on the keys. I knew it. I knew I shouldn't have told her. She knows as well as I do what kind of neighborhood that is. Look, Rosa, it's not as bad as everyone thinks. There hasn't even been a stabbing in a couple days. Stabbing? <laughs> no, 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 crap. Shaking her head. Rosa keys the ignition on, not carrying the check before speeding off the curb. I am taking you to my house. Oh, thank God. No arguing. Rosa's tone knocks my feeble protests away like a ten-pound ball right down the center of the lane. I keep silent after that, no sense arguing with her when she gets in this mood. And you know, talking and breathing feels like my insides are on fire. I wonder which is worse. 
The rest of the trip out to Rosa's house passes in relative silence. Save for my involuntary curses at each bump in the road and Rosa's muttered apologies, I don't think either of us said anything. Until... Hey, Rosa? Mer mercifully, Rosa has had slowed down the car. Slowed the car down as she hit the gravel road of her family's farm. Quoi? Are you, uh... Are your parents home today? Rosa gives me a quick smile. Nope, it's just us, me and Novia. And she sounds just as nervous as I am. As Rosa promised, the house is quiet as we shuffle through the front door. The lack of delicious smells feels wrong somehow. Rosa, you didn't need to carry me. Shush. Rosa dumps our backpacks by the door. Come, let's get you lying down. Rosa, Rosa le Slowly, Rosa leads me down the hall, my heart rate quickening. You, you forgot to capitalize her name. Sad. It's like someone hitting a speed bag inside my chest. Rosa's home isn't what I expected. Well, room, I should say. There's her panties and, and bras everywhere. Why are women so messy? There's these little pin things everywhere. <laughs> Why? <laughs> you won't be able to find them and you'll have to buy more. Rosa's room isn't what I expected. With how beautiful and caring Rosa is, it's a, it's a shock to see her room is as messy as mine. Her desk is a mess of papers. Some school assignments, others look like plant ma magazines of some type. Photos dot the wall above the desk, framed family float photos hanging side by side with pol polar <laughs> rock snapshots of her and Stella. The bed is a mess of clothes, a, a mountain of which Rosa is quickly evacuating with reckless abandon. I don't know how you can stand that. I... Sorry for the mess, Anon. Let me just... I lean on the desk for support, clutching my side. Don't worry about it. You should see my ro room. Clothes and cornflakes everywhere. Cornflakes? I carefully look at anything other than the bra that Rosa is hanging up. Oh, that's the... Uh... Oh, that's, that's a big bra right there. Oh, my God. Oh. Well, oh, these panties are, are massive. Good God. Yeah, it's for my pet. Oh, you have a pet, Minlovia? I can see the gears inside Rose's mind grinding to a halt. A pet to feed cornflakes. Pet food is expensive, okay? Rosa pauses her cleaning, shooting me a questioning stare. Well, he's a Roomba, so... Rosa gives me a look, one that has been passed from woman to man for centuries. <laughs> Just get on the bed, Tonto. Hey, I saw that smile! You want another bruise? I hold up my hands in surrender, letting Rosa guide me down onto the bed. Seeing her smile like that may have helped my mood, but it did little for my body. Oh. There we go, Minovia, nice and easy. Clenching my teeth, I managed to swing both legs onto the bed. <sighs> Hurts like a motherfucker. I'm suddenly aware of the color colored crucifix above Rosa's bed. Probably shouldn't swear too much. Wait, haven't I been have, haven't I been wearing the crucifix Rosa gave me this whole time? 
comfortable. Compared to my bed back in Skin Row, my cycline in the cloud. Yeah, thanks. Just relax, I'll go get the medicine kit. Rosa gives my hand a squeeze before heading back down the hall, leaving me alone. I like the detail that you actually kind of <laughs> put them in the photo frames, like kind of properly, right here. In her room. In my girlfriend's room. On her bed. With no parents in the house. Man, been a while since I've had a five alarm spaghetti alert go go off. Ugh. What does that smell of pasta? Sacrilege. Sac sacrilege. No. No Italian food in this household, let me tell ya. Okay, I think I've got enough stuff. Rosa re-enters the room, arms full of gau gauze, creams, and various poultices. Some of this stuff I think Pappy uses on his scales, so we probably don't need those. A bottle sporting a picture of a smiling dino with a Spanish catchphrase is discarded on the desk. I'm imagining a dinosaur in like that that bug outfit, you know what I mean? Or <laughs> or like with the 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 show where the old uh, the elderly people play uh little kids. I'm just imagining that now <laughs> as dinosaurs. All right, on on, shirt off. No way in hell am I letting Rosa see my skeleton bod. <laughs> what is that? That, that is the, probably one of the funniest pictures I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> Can I just pull it up a bit? Take it off. C come, hazlo hora. Okay, okay. Gritting my teeth, I managed to pull my shirt up over my head. My chest looks like a checkerboard of splotchy bruises. Oh, my poor chico. Rosa traces the outline of one bruise gently, causing me to flinch. Sorry, did I hurt you? Oh, it's, it's just... I can feel my face start to redden. Come on, Anna, this is stupid. You and Rosa kiss all the time. Mwah, mwah, mwah. So why is it weird for her to see you without a shirt on? Maybe we start with my back, you know, to ease into it. I managed to roll over, hiding my increasingly red face in the pillow. Dios mio, some of these are bad. I can hear a squirting sound from behind me. Try and relax, Anon. Tenderly, Rosa starts rubbing the mystery ointment into my bruises. I grip my teeth at first, but soon she finds the right amount of pressure to, apl to apply. Better. Mm -hmm. The balm begins to warm, s slowly draining the aches and pains out of my screaming muscles. Relaxing, I close my eyes, getting lost in the hypnotic repetition of Rosa's fingers. Feels nice. Is that singing? It's nice. Spanish, though. Is that the radio? I wonder who... My eyes slowly flutter open. The mysterious melody that cooed me to sleep is still going. I'm so relaxed, it takes my brain a second to catch up on things. What I've been hearing this whole time has been... Rosa. I can't understand the words, but I don't need to. I can hear it in her voice, 
the compassion, the kindness, the lo Oh, you're awake. I twist my torso slightly, peering up at her. Hmm? Rose's fingers idly trace across my back. That was beautiful. That was beautiful, that song. What was that? Rosa shifts on her bed, tucking her legs underneath her. That it was the song that Mama used to sing when I was a little girl. Her eyes unfocus a bit, as if she's reliving something in her head. She used to hold me on her arms and rock me to sleep whenever I was scared. It made me feel safe. I've woken up enough now to twi twist onto my back. My mom did the same thing to me. At least back when she still cared. Now though, Rosa, I, help, I hate myself for the question I ask next. What about your mom? The empty house, is she? I mean, did something. I let my words die. Even for me, it's too painful to finish them. A moment passes between us. Somewhere outside, a bird starts to squawk. Rosa stares hard at her hands for a second longer before nodding. And, um... Again, I'll show this if it ever gets finished in a future video. Rosa brushes away a tear. She, uh... Oh, Pappy had to take her back to the hospital. It's getting worse. The tears flow freely now. And there's nothing I can do. Nothing either of us can do. Rosa turns back to me, her voice suddenly harsh. Why? Why can't I do anything? I'm supposed to be good at it, Anon. Helping people. So why can't I do anything about my own mother? The angu anguished ankle sore shuffles closer to me. I can fix you, Anon. Make you f better when you're hurt. When you hurt, make you smile when you're sad. Her voice is pleading. Please, Anon, tell me how to fix her. Whatever strength Rosa had. Left, le head left, f finally fails. She falls back against the wall, sobbing uncontrollably. In a second, I have her in my arms. Bruises be damned. She buries her face in my chest, hugging me tight. Fuck it, I can ignore the pain. I'm not the one hurting anyways. Rosa... I guess there's going to be a part three. I'll... I didn't expect some of these to be multiple part. You know what I mean? But, uh... I'll see you in the future for more Rosa, more Trish. See you then.